Hey guys, it's Dave with Adobe. Devin asked me to give you guys a few tips on using the power of audio to help make better videos. And I just want to give you a couple words of advice. I see uh, even myself and a lot of people getting caught up in sort of the latest hardware gear to help tell that story. And that's really important. I mean, certainly aerial shots using something like an affordable DJI with a GoPro Hero 3 or Hero 3 Plus camera will, will help you get some amazing shots. And obviously a lot of you guys are using Canon 5Ds that uh, Devin has certainly made some legendary use of those. And the affordable and amazing Luminix uh, uh, by Panasonic uh, GH3, uh, really amazing. One of my new favorite cameras that, that's out is sort of this run and gun uh, setup that I can get with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema and a Zacuto. Uh, rigging system like this, it's pretty amazing. You know, these Marauder systems really help you get that shot that you want to get, but you can't get caught up too much in the hardware side. Because one of the things you see that Devin does that's pretty amazing is tells an amazing story uh, through the power of audio and certainly using audio uh, from some of his guys like Scott and Bindo and some of those uh, amazing songs that he uses. It really helps drive that pictorial view, that narrative that he does and his thought that goes into what needs to happen at a certain beat and how that works. So we've got some tips to kind of show you guys how to quickly get set up and understand what's going on with music based on beat markers. So let me give you a quick example of one I put together. And it took about 20, 25 minutes to sort of line these photos up. And I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about, then I'll show you how I did it. So you guys can sort of see that, you know, right on the beat markers, those pictures are kind of changing to the beat. With pictures, it's really easy. It's a great way to practice. Just get a whole bunch of photographs, lay them down on a timeline, put some beat markers down, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a second, and it'll really help tell that story. Once you get those down, you can start to listen to the words and then start to pick out certain elements of those videos or those pictures that talk to those words. It'll really help drive the narrative. So let's jump on Premiere and I'll show you how it works. So here we are inside of Premiere Pro. If your desktop doesn't look like this, all you have to do is go to Window Workspace, Reset Current Workspace, and that'll go ahead and reset it. So one of the first things you have to check uh, before you do anything is to make sure your sequence settings are okay. So rather than go to some complex uh, screen that looks like this, the easiest way to do this is just go look in your footage and just look at some clips and maybe double click on one of them and go, okay, that looks like the right size. I think I want the video to be either a 720 or a 1080. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a test setting over here on my sequence 01 that was already created uh, for my project when I opened it. So I'm going to drag and drop this video right in here and I get this alert that says, look, you have a mismatch warning. That's just telling me, let Premiere Pro do the work to figure out what the sequence needs to do. And you can go ahead and just change those sequence settings. Now I know I'm set up for a 16 by 9 edit, 1080, everything's ready to go and it's going to match my footage. I might have some other footage in there. I know Devin's got some 4K footage in here. That I'll show you how to go ahead and do a scale to frame size but for the most part I'm ready to go so now what I would do is I would just simply delete this clip because now I know my settings are correct next step is really easy I'm gonna go ahead and bring up iTunes and I'm gonna go ahead and use that same higher piece that you heard earlier uh, by Scott and Brendo I have the ability to pick a song and drag and drop it directly into my project bin so I'm just gonna grab the higher piece here drag and drop it into the bin and let it go and I'm pretty much ready to edit. So now all you have to do is just drag and drop 
this piece directly on the audio track. I like to see my waveform so I can see what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just move my mouse right in this gray area next to the solo button here and just uh, scroll wheel up a little bit and that'll go ahead and expose the song for me. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start the song at about right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this in just for the demo. And I'm gonna just click in this area here and just hit delete. So that'll just bring that back to the beginning for me. Now what we're gonna do is just hit the M key every time I wanna put a marker. This is the marker key here. You see the keyboard shortcut tip pops up there, M. All I'm gonna do is hit the space bar to start the audio playing and just hit the M key to the rhythm of the music. That's as hard as this editing gets is making sure that you actually have a sense of rhythm. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So the next step is to go ahead and start working with your footage. Uh, I've got a bin or a folder here uh, called carting. It's some footage that I snagged from Devin's hard drive. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on that bin. And I'm going to go ahead and just dock it over here. There's lots of different ways you can do this. To me, I just want the ability to look at my footage here. I'm going to double click on them and sort of set my endpoints over here on my source monitor. So a couple things that you can start to look at. First of all, you you have what's called sorting order where how these pictures are sorted. I have this sort of opening scene where Devin's sort of looking at the camera like he's turning it on. I've got a nice opening shot of the uh, hill coming down here. I might want to put this guy putting on the helmet maybe over here behind the guy in the blue. And again I can just start to, to go down and look at some of the footage that's here and figure out well maybe I want the dog over here. Again you can also hit the tilde key again the squiggly key under the escape key and that will sort of give you a bigger view of what's going on with all the uh, all the footage there I can sort of see I've got the the go-kart lift going on here that looks okay I've got a nice wipeout scene over here and uh, you know I think I'm happy with the way that that looks again it's as easy as just moving things around moving things up or moving things down and let's go ahead and lay this down and show you how easy this is so I'm gonna select all my clips here and I'm gonna hit the button over here called automate the sequence so when I click this it's gonna give me a couple of different options again I want it by the sort order that's the storyboarding option that I have up there I want to place it at the unnumbered markers that's these green markers here again with no numbers on them I have ignore audio checked so you have to make sure that you check the audio so I'll click OK and the first thing you'll see is our videos now have been laid out we actually have all of that stuff on the timeline now if I zoom in by hitting the plus key down here let's take a closer look at what's actually happening on the timeline you'll notice what we have here are some gaps now I have to be careful with these gaps because I don't want to start moving stuff around because because again, these things are all cut to the beat markers that uh, Premiere did automatically. I do have the option to extend this, and if I can extend it, then I'll push this over here and maybe pull a little bit out on the front and go down and just sort of look at that. That'll create a black flash, by the way. And again, you don't want to close gaps. There's a big tendency for people to go, how come I can't select the whole timeline and close gaps? If you close gaps, that's going to move this over here, and you're not going to have it right on the beat. So again, if that's that's what you're trying to achieve you have to be careful with that and in this case where I happen to have here if I happen to have Devin looking at the camera and I want that scene I just have to push this back over here and pull this out a little bit more and then sort of deal with it that way I can start to go down the timeline and just take a quick look and see if I have any gaps I've definitely got some gaps here that I can just sort of zoom in and take a look at and just pull those back and up the scroll wheel a little bit so you can sort of get a little PyCon view or icon view of what that looks like. And it looks like we've definitely got a little bit of gaps there. Again, what's causing that 
is your uh, you know your cuts here are a little bit too short and there's also some other techniques that you can use called the slip and slide tools I'll just sort of adjust some of that again just a couple of quick things you know I've got this guy sort of looking at the camera you know I want to make sure that's sort of a good look for him right there at the end I like that so I'll keep that shot there and you sort of get the idea play some of this back and give you a chance to see what your first rough cut actually looks like And let's take a look at this piece over here and see how this came out. It's a nice long piece of video. So you have to be careful what video you use in this particular scene. Probably not the best piece. You can always go back here and try to find that one clip that you're looking for. And so I think the shot that I want was actually way up here in the beginning. So I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna delete this clip and I'm just gonna bring this one down. That blue just overwrote the green there, so I don't wanna do that. A couple different ways around that. You know, you can double click on it and take the video uh, from here. Uh, if I double click here, I can grab the video and just drag the video. Um, another trick, by the way, is once you know your audio is right, just lock it. These slash marks will come up and you won't overwrite your audio that way. So I'll go ahead and just drag this down and I'll zoom in and sort of get an idea of what this looks like and say, well, this clip may actually be, it's a little too short. So there's a couple different ways to fix this. I could go into speed duration and say, well, just slow that down by 75% uh, what that might look like. So a real nice crawl up that hill. Yeah. That's really the basics to how this stuff works. It's not that hard. It really has to do with letting the audio drive the video. Now, one thing you did see in the other video was some animation. So let me give you an idea how easy it is to actually create uh, some quick text on the screen. Again, I wouldn't overdo this in this kind of video. Uh, I would use more of the bouncy text at the beginning or at the end of the piece. Um, I'm sure we'll get questions on how we do some of those things. So I thought I'd give you just a quick idea how that's done. I'll take the picture here of that slow crawl up. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say replace with After Effects Composition. This is now going to go ahead and launch After Effects, set it up for this particular video, and I just type in some quick text and I think you'll be amazed at how fast this actually is. So here I am inside of After Effects with a couple of clicks. All I have to do is go ahead and just type some text. So I'm going to just stretch that out a bit. Maybe I'll pick a little heavier font here. And from here, it's just your typical Adobe tools. You know, uh, me, I would probably just grab a color picker and sort of find something that matches within there with that scene. I don't have to worry too much about color. This blue looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and just grab a stroke over here and color pick and maybe just get uh, something with a little more brightness to it. That, that probably looks okay. If I know the name of the preset that I want to apply to the animation, I can just select it here. Or if I want to get a visual representation, I'll click on the wing menu over here and go to browse presets. So here I've, I've double clicked on the text. I'll just go to maybe some 3D text and I'll just look and see uh, which one of these uh, text animations look like it's going to work for me. And I'll get an idea what that looks like. And just move the timeline here. And that actually doesn't work too bad. I can just go ahead and hit play and let it build that out. And the nice thing is I didn't have to do any of this animation. It just did it. If I'm not sure that that's right, I can just go back over here to bridge and get a better idea of what some of these other uh, animations look like. Again, there's tons of them to select and just play around with. 
Uh, you can go back up here. Phil and Stroke has got some pretty cool ones. You can kind of get in here and just just really sort of have some fun with those. So, um, you know, experiment with some of that stuff. Take a look at it, and you'll see it's really, really easy to do. Now, the thing with After Effects when you get started with it is there's lots of knobs and switches down here that are actually controlling all those animations under the animator. So it's a lot of people will just use this as a starting point and tweak that animation. But I think just for the sake of this demo, all I'm going to do is do this. I'll go ahead and hit save. I'll even quit out of After Effects. At this point, I could go out and play it out depending on the GPU card that I have. If I need to render that out, it'll render fairly quick. So I'll give it just a second or two uh, to do that if I want to see uh, how that animation actually works. So let's go ahead and let it render that out. So I think you guys get the idea. Now the last step that you have to do once you've finished your video obviously is export. And I know we've covered this before, but all you have to do is just go to export media. My recommendation is going to be uh, for most people is just to go to the H.264 setting and go down to uh, choose, let's hit Y on your keyboard to the YouTube settings. Uh, this video was actually done at 1080. So I'll just go ahead and put that at 1080, 2997 and go ahead and queue that up and export it out. And I'm good to go and it's actually pretty fast. And that's a quick look at how to edit to beat markers.